The Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the 15th and 16th chapters. Listen now for what the Spirit is saying to the church. Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you asked me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because they do not believe in me. About righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has, all that the Father has, is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. So this weekend has been a very exciting weekend. It's been filled with events such as proms, dances, graduations. Speaking of graduations, our very own Pastor Katie now is a master of divinity. And today is her last Sunday with us as the pastoral intern for Christian Formation. But I have it on good authority that she probably is not going too far away. She will probably have a call within the next week or so. Praise be to God. Yeah, absolutely. So we had great events like that, things that are very celebrative. You know, we are joyful and we are celebrating these rites of passage, these events. But there is also another event that not only is just for us and, you know, here and in our own personal lives, there has been an event that has taken place that has captivated the whole world. It's almost like Pentecost has happened once again, and it started at 3 o'clock in the morning yesterday. <laughs> How many of you, be honest, got up at 3 o'clock with your tea and your scones and watched the royal wedding? It's okay. I watched it on the reload. <laughs> I can't get up better. <laughs> I'm not a morning person. But this was a very, it is an interesting wedding. Out of all the royal weddings, this one is very unique because the bride is American, or was, African-American, divorcee. Yeah. And the wedding itself was not like any other royal weddings. They had a fantastic choir there, the Kingdom Choir, which is uh, sung uh, out of the African-American Christian tradition. And I got to say that they kept it very reserved. <laughs> it was fantastic. But yeah, I know that they wanted to go a little bit more, but they were in England. But also, one of the interesting things is that the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church that's here in the United States was the preacher. Never, ever, ever has that ever occurred. And the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church right now 
Bishop Curry is also African American. For an event like this, the bride and groom were definitely stepping on tradition. They were breaking tradition in many ways. I watched the royal wedding just because of Bishop Curry, because I have heard him preach before. And let me tell you, he did not disappoint. <laughs> in fact, he did everything that he normally does. He, he is just the, one of the best preachers. He had control. He, he took you on a journey. He took you up. He took you down. And he pierced your heart with knowledge of God, the gospel. And he talked about this power, this all-consuming power, the same power that really we are celebrating today on Pentecost, which is the Spirit. The spirit that moves, that we cannot control, this spirit of wild, crazy, divine love that breaks into our lives, even when we don't want it to happen, and changes everything, turns our world upside down, moves us to do something that we did not know that we wanted to do until that moment when the spirit came and it came upon our hearts and transformed our hearts and our minds, and we saw the world in a new way way. The Spirit of God moves, and we cannot control the Spirit of God. That sermon that Bishop Curry preached, it was, oh, it's on YouTube, it's all over the place. When they scanned the audience, and I joke with my Episcopal friends about this too, when they scanned the audience, everybody's mouths were kind of open. They didn't know what to do with them. I mean, it truly it was kind of that, that look of, in the book of Acts where they talk about that experience of the disciples where they're questioning it's men of Judah and Jerusalem. Uh, it seems like he's drunk. What's going on here? We're hearing something in a new way. The groom was crying during Bishop Curry's sermon. It was that powerful of a word, a good word. Afterwards, they had, I was watching BBC, and uh, they had uh, Meredith, I forget her last name, but she's from the Today Show, um, American Vera. sitting there. Who? Yeah. There we go. We got the fans over here. And the, the British commentators there said they, they've never experienced anybody preaching like that in England. And they said it was just like, it was un unreal, and especially in an Anglican church. And they said, you know, is this, I mean, was that, is this sermon and this uh, Bishop Curry's style and everything like that, is it really uncommon in the United States like it is here? And Meredith said, no. <laughs> It is, but it's not. Because this is what Bishop Curry has been preaching from the day that he was consecrated as the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church, and to which the, everybody, including uh, all the leaders in the Presbyterian Church, everybody ecumenically, we all point and say yes to, is that he is preaching that same word that God delivered to those first disciples, those apostles that were waiting in the portico of the temple in Jerusalem, the spirit of God that washes over us, that says to us that there is more than what you see. Everything, this pain and suffering that you see around you, this is not right. This is not of God. The spirit comes to us and says that God is love. And this love overflows. This love cannot be controlled. This love is poured out on you. This love is fiery and passionate and it cannot be held back, and you that are received in it, you that are captured by it, you that are dancing in the light of love, nobody can hold you back. And this kind of love, this fiery, passionate love, is the kind of love that fuels us to do things that we know we need to do, to be able to stand up in those times and fulfill our baptismal vows, to stand up to sin in the world, to stand up to violence in the world, 
to stand up to poverty in the world, to stand up to those that are that are homeless because of our own sins, to renounce our sins, the sins of our communities, our nations, whatever it is that stops us from being the kind of incarnate love that we saw in Jesus. The world needs love, passionate, fiery love. And just as Bishop Curry said in his sermon at the wedding, there was that French Jesuit. Chardin. If we can harness, just like we harnessed fire to cook our foods, to create engines for vehicles, to move us around for airplanes, if we can harness the kind of fire for that kind of things. If we can harness the fire of love, that sacrificial, unconditional love that we see and have received from Jesus, if we can harness that, the world will be transformed. Brothers and sisters, on this Pentecost Sunday, this Sunday as the Spirit is moving in our world, it, there are things that are going on. I encourage you to pray. Pray like you never have before. Pray that the Holy Spirit will come to you to fill you up. I pray that you will pray and ask God to fill the kind of love that only comes from God, to fill you up with that love so that all of the things that divide us as a human people is pushed out. Ask God to be in your hearts and in your life, in your words and your actions, so that when the Spirit comes upon you and you are filled with that unconditional love that changes everything, that you then may be what this world needs, wherever God has planted you, that you will be love incarnate, that you will be part of this kingdom of God that is rising up and becoming a reality so that there will never be violence against children in schools again. So there will never be people at a homeless shelter starving. So people will know that they are loved. Do you know what it is to feel unconditional love? People need you to show them that love. Today, the world changes. Today, the Spirit of God comes to you. Today, love comes to you. Embrace it. Embrace it. I love you. Show the world now that love that only comes from God. All praise, honor, and glory be to you, O Christ. Amen.